Biologists have observed that the chirping rate of crickets of a certain species is related to temperature, and the relationship appears to be very linear. A cricket produces 120 chirps per minute at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 168 chirps per minute at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Write a linear function relating the temperature, T, and the number of chirps per minute, N. So first we want to notice that it tells us that this relationship appears to be linear. So we're trying to write a linear function. Our function is going to look like a line. And our variables are T for temperature and N is the number of chirps per minute. And before we begin organizing the information in the problem, it's helpful to pause and ask ourselves which variable is the independent and which is the dependent variable. So in this case, the number of chirps per minute depends on the temperature. So that's going to tell us that temperature is going to be our independent variable and the number of chirps per minute will be our dependent variable. So in terms of x and y, this means t, temperature, is like our x variable and n is essentially like our y variable. So I'm going to start with a variable key and then I'm going to organize the information in a table. So t is going to be the temperature specifically in degrees, degrees Fahrenheit. N is the number of chirps per minute. Now since there wasn't an equation given to us, we're trying to write the equation ourselves. One strategy is to organize the information in the problem in a table. So it tells us that a cricket produces 120 chirps per minute when the temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So when the temperature is 70, we have 120 chirps per minute. And likewise, it also says we have 168 chirps per minute at 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So essentially, this problem really has given us two different coordinates. If you don't care for a table, you could also organize this information as ordered pairs. 70, 120, and 80, 168. And since we're trying to write the equation for a line, then we need to find the slope to begin. So we know the slope typically is the change in y over our change in x. So I'm going to write that as the change in n, since n is our dependent variable, divided by the change in t, where t is our temperature. And we're going to subtract our y values. It's 168 minus 120 divided by the difference in our x values. Or in this case, we have n values in the numerator, t values in the denominator. So this simplifies to 48 divided by 10, which will give us a slope of 4.8. Now looking at the two coordinates that we have, neither of these coordinates here, neither one is the y-intercept. And remember, I know that because if I had the y-intercept, I know the x value would have been 0. So since neither of these coordinates is the y-intercept, then I'm going to choose to write my equation in point-slope form. So quick review of point-slope form, y minus y sub 1 equals my slope times x minus x sub 1. But now I'll use the variables in this problem, where the y value was really n, the number of chirps per minute, now you can use either of these points, it doesn't matter which point. I'm going to use the first one, 70 comma 120. So it would be n minus the n value, 120, equal, equals my slope, 4.8, times, instead of x, this will be t for temperature, minus the temperature of 70. Since I need a little room, let me go to my next page.
And now this problem, if I look back at the directions, it asked us to write a linear function. And typically, when it asks for a function specifically, I always recommend that my students use function notation in their answer. So to use function notation, I'm going to go ahead and just add 120 to both sides so that I can isolate the n. So n is equal to 4.8 times the quantity t minus 70 plus 120. And then remember, we discussed earlier that temperature is the independent variable, n, the number of chirps, is the dependent variable. So all that I'm going to do is switch this n here into function notation, which would be the number of chirps depends on the temperature. So I would write that as n of t equals 4.8 times the quantity t minus 70 plus 120. And this would be a perfectly acceptable form of a line, a linear function. However, if you prefer, you really don't like this form, maybe you prefer slope-intercept form, then we could go ahead and distribute. So this is or. You don't have to do slope-intercept, but if you wanted to, or maybe you have an instructor that requires it, then you would distribute. 4.8 times t is 4.8t, 4.8 times negative 70 is negative 336, and then you'd add the 120. This gives us the equation 4.8t minus 216. So this would be an alternative answer, but both of these box answers are acceptable. The next part of this problem asks us to interpret the meaning of the slope in this context, including the units. So from earlier, we determined that the slope was 4.8. And remember, we said that was the change in n divided by the change in t. So if we look at our units, in the numerator here, n, going back to our variable key earlier on, n was the number of chirps per minute. So we have a unit of number of chirps per minute over the denominator was t, which was a measurement of temperature, and that was measured in degrees. So this would be per degree. So it's chirps per minute per degree for the units of the slope. But when I ask you to interpret the meaning, that means we actually want to write a sentence explaining what this value of 4.8, what it actually means. So if you think of this 4.8 like 4.8 divided by 1, that means we get 4.8 more chirps per minute for every 1 degree increase in temperature. So that will be one way to write uh, the meaning of this slope. Another alternative way of writing this, you could say that the number of chirps per minute is increasing at a rate of 4.8 chirps per minute per degree. And finally, if this species of crickets can only survive when the temperatures are between 50 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit, discuss the domain and the range in this context. So since the domain is the set of all possible input values, and if we go ahead and look back at one of our old functions that we wrote, one of our earlier equations was n of t equals 4.8 t minus 216. This was the one in slope-intercept form. So t is my input, my independent variable. So my domain in this case, it's telling me that the number of, of the temperatures, excuse me, can be between 50 and 90. So the possible temperatures for the domain, it would be the interval from 50 to 90. And since it said between, it didn't say including, then I'm going to use parentheses for both the 50 and the 90. However, the range values, the range values would be the 
number of chirps, and we'll have to figure those out. So we need to essentially substitute in a temperature of 50 degrees and then solve for the number of chirps. So 4.8 times 50 minus 216 looks to be 24. So at a temperature of 50, we have 24 chirps per minute. And then we'll figure out at a temperature of 90, how many chirps per minute we have by substituting 90 in for t. 4.8 times 90 minus 216 looks to be 216. So the range, the smallest, the lowest number of chirps, n, looks to be 24. And the largest, the highest number of chirps is 216.